Welcome to the Washington Stormwater Center grant writing workshop videos. These workshops were conducted in September 2012 at four locations around Washington State. They were funded through a grant from the Washington Department of Ecology and filmed by Leaping Frog Films, organized to provide a morning lecture by Eric Schollenberger, a renowned grant writing expert, with follow-up comments and advice from a representative of the Washington Department of Ecology. The afternoon session featured a speaker from a local jurisdiction who provided a permittee's perspective on grant writing, a short writing exercise to construct an abstract description of the project, and an executive summary followed. The workshop you are about to view features Kim Ashmore. Kim is the Street, Stormwater, and Fleet Manager for the City of Centralia. He spoke to our audience in Olympia on his successful grant writing efforts. So um, what I want to tell you about it, our application process of submitting grants is we're batting about 750. We're uh, three out of four we've been funded for. The first one that we submitted back in 2008, uh, I don't have any formal grant writing. Um, there was an advertisement that came out that there was money available, lots of millions of dollars, and I thought we should try to get some of that. So the public works director said, good luck, here's an application. Okay, so I looked at it, looked at what they were looking for, and we decided that we were going to hire an engineering firm to write that first grant application. Not having any training, not knowing what I was doing, seemed like money well spent. And it was, because we were funded for what was called an urban catch basin retrofit. And we took three basins in Centralia, cleaned those entire basins, selected some catch basin filter technologies for treatment, and then we sampled and tested six before the, the filters went in and six rain events after to see what the difference was and how much pollutants were, were removed by those filters and two different pieces of uh, filter technology were used. So we got that project done, come up with a, a nice big thick binder of, of all the samples and, and the tests and the results and we decided that that was in 2008. 2009 we wanted to start a stream team in Centralia. Uh, Lacey, Olympia, Tumwater, and Thurston County had one that was pretty successful. I talked to some people there. It seemed like something easy to get for education outreach with the city of Centralia, get people involved in it. So there was a grant opportunity called the Terry Hussman Funds, and he was a former employee with Department of Ecology. Um, I thought we could take a stab at writing that grant because we were only asking for $12,500, and most engineering firms, well, at least a couple years ago, it's eight to twelve thousand dollars for them to write a grant application for you. So Janelle Spalding, who's uh, with the Shayless Basin Partnership and Grace Harbor Community College, and I sat down and started writing a grant for the Terry Hussman funds, and we got twelve thousand five hundred dollars to start a stream team in Centralia. So feeling pretty good about success so far, we we decided to submit a third application, and and I've actually got copies that uh, somebody's passing around to you, and this is the actual application. And this one was uh, during the 2010 fiscal year for retrofit and low impact development grants. And so what we wanted to do, we've done some streetscape projects in Centralia. Downtown's been kind of redone with stamped concrete. It's colorful, crosswalks. Uh, it, it's a really nice looking project, but once you get off of that five or six block area, you start running into some of the downtown area that doesn't look very good. So what we seen as a benefit was to remove concrete sidewalks that were in bad shape, curbs, take the runoff from State Highway 507 and run it through curbside road le roadway rain gardens, maybe some pervious sidewalks, which, which we've done some of lately, and just uh, put this project in, see what happens. And we did this one in-house. The Public Works Director and I went through here, started filling in the blanks, and, and we'll kind of go through it a little bit. Um, got the paperwork back, turned into ecology. The, the one thing I'll point out to you is that when this is it's due at 5 p.m. on Tuesday, it's due by 5 p.m. on Tuesday. Don't think you can walk in there at 501. It's kind of like contracts and bid documents. You know, you've got to submit those by the time. So make sure you get them in on time. But we, we submitted that application. We got the information back. And as they rate and rank on the list of priorities, we fell down far enough that the money ran out. So we weren't funded for that project, but we are now. And I'll tell you how that happened in a minute. So we, we kind of let that project sit. You know, we, we thought we had a good application. Just recently, some more money became available. And, and like a lot of people, because there was a lot of applications that were submitted for regional decant facilities, that's the next one that we decided to write. And we did that in-house. And, and in your book under tab six, you'll see uh, number 33 is there's City of Centralia Regional Decant Facility. 
that one's been funded and uh, we're, we're going to be in the process here shortly of taking that grant application um, and, and letter to city council for approval. Um, it's a 75% grant with a 25% match. We've been pretty successful, I would say, and with the exception of this one that didn't make the first cut, what we just recently found out uh, within the last couple of months, and they just decided to fund every project that was on the list, is what I heard. All of a sudden now we have a grant offer for our downtown roadside curb rain garden project, 75% um, grant, 25% local match. We are now batting 1,000 again because the one that we were turned away on the first time has now got a grant offer to us to, to accept that grant money to do this project as well. So I, I want to kind of go through the application a little bit with you. One of the things I asked Tuesday in Ellensburg was, you have grant applications or you're going to be starting to write some and you're kind of wondering what to write in there. And I thought, that's the same question I had in 2008 when I was told the first time to go write a grant application is, well, how do you do that? What do you say? How do you sell your idea? I brought this one along that technically didn't get funded the first go around, but has since to kind of go through it with you and just show you some of the, the blanks and, and what we wrote in there and some of the key points that I think made it unsuccessful, but ultimately successful. So if you go on to page 10, the brief narrative description, 50 words or less is not a lot of words to be able to sell your project to the reviewers. So anything that you can put in there, in my mind, that shows partnerships, community involvement, other municipality involvement. You see in there that the Chehalis River actually is a 303D listed river. I think that's important when you're trying to show a water quality benefit and that you're gonna to try to take some of the runoff off of 507, take it out of China Creek, which goes into the Chehalis River, you're showing part of the water quality benefit. We have, China Creek's about five miles long, runs right through the middle of Centralia and has 46 pipe connections to that creek. Those are all stormwater pipe connections. So any of those connections that we can eliminate from China Creek is going to be a little bit of water quality benefit on the Chehalis River. So in, in less than 50 words, you have to try to describe your project and try to get that interest from the reviewers. What I learned on Tuesday in Ellensburg was that, and it's similar to the mail you get, you look at the mail, you open it up, you look at the first paragraph, and if it doesn't curb your interest, you're going to round file it. I think it's the same intent here. If you, in 50 words or less, tell them what you want to do and how you want to do it and what it's going to do to, to a 303 delisted water or to the roads or to the runoff, the water quality, you're going to curb their interest. They're going to dive into the document a little bit farther. And that's where, really, you start getting into a lot of more of the information. So the executive summary, which actually there's no points, that's really kind of the background of why you submitted this project. Ultimately for us, it's, it's to, to clean up the water that's in the Chehalis River coming out of China Creek. China Creek just naturally flows. It's a salmon bearing stream, five miles long, and all those connections of stormwater on there. You all know as, as stormwater professionals what kind of pollutants are in there. So we're trying to eliminate those and we're trying to describe here how we're gonna do that and, and what we're gonna do. So as you go through this document a little bit further, it gets into the description of uh, budget. That's really hard to do when you've never done a project before of that magnitude. What we did is we took a little bit of lessons that we learned from building a rain garden at our high school. Our high school had this, this planted area with rhododendrons and, and the beauty bark, and it had two downspouts coming into it, and they were going into an underground concrete pipe into the Shayless River. And we thought that maybe we could disconnect those downspouts, turn them at a 90 degree angle, take the rhododendrons out, and put a rain garden in there to capture all that water. And we did that with nine high school kids and our stormwater budget paid for the improvements. So we were able to gauge a little bit of cost for a rain garden based on the first one that I know of in Centralia. And I just started my 29th year with the city and I've never heard of a rain garden being built there. So those costs are kind of what we used for this. We used uh, just like public works projects for asphalt, concrete, curbs, excavation, all those numbers, you get those from the city engineer. He gives you a ballpark of what it's going to cost to tear out concrete, what it's going to cost to put it back. Um, so we started developing these numbers. Our engineers worked with me. The public works director worked with me. Um, went down to downtown area in these four blocks. You've got to have that community involvement as well. So we went down to, to find out if they would even entertain an idea like this. And uh, out of the 20, I think it was 26 business owners that we contacted, 20 of them wrote letters in support of you know, doing these rain gardens, changing the concrete to maybe pervious concrete, just 
beautifying it, but also eliminating all the catch basins and drains off the runoff of 507 from the China Creek. Very important, I think, to get the pr perspective of, of the people that are gonna benefit from it. In this case, it was the, the downtown business owners. You gotta have everybody's name listed in there that's gonna be part of it. You just don't put in there that it's gonna be the stormwater manager and he's doing everything. If you look in there, we've got the public works director and what his responsibilities are, our city engineer, and there's also other partners in there. Because one of the things with downtown roadside rain gardens or any rain garden for that matter is who's gonna do the maintenance. And that's one of the things we talk to about with the business owners down there is, I'm not gonna have time and my crew's not gonna have time to go out you know, every month and pull weeds in rain gardens or pull trash out of there. So we got a lot of buy-in from the business owners, though you don't really see it in here. The letters of support was part of that buy-in. They, they said they would take care of it. Now I know that could be a, a double-edged sword because they say it now, we do the improvements, you go back six months later and there's trash and weeds everywhere. That could happen, but this area of town was, was sidewalks were cracked, grass was growing up them. Um, it was just a little bit run down. There was a lot of vacant buildings down there as well. And it was, it was a way of getting a water quality outcome to maybe try to beautify a section of town that might even get some more tenants coming to it. By the way, the Centralia Downtown Association isn't even part of this stretch of 507 that we want to do, but they seen the, the benefit to water quality to say, we're going to throw a letter of support towards your application because we see the benefits of sprucing up that end of town, a water quality benefit, getting a few connections off of China Creek, and ultimately improving the water quality. Part two is page 19 and how we came up with the numbers for that actual grant in a, a budget because we really had no idea what this project was gonna cost. Our projected total cost is about $649,000 with 25% of that being our local match. I wanted to go through that application. Said That one didn't pass the first test, but it has since been We've accepted a, a grant offer. We've got to take it to council for approval. But the regional decamp facility, again, was the same type of project. We, we wrote that one in-house. We talked with the Port of Centralia, the City of Chehalis, WashDOT, Lewis County. We talked with everybody because almost every jurisdiction, county, city, state, has a vector truck. And they're, they're having to clean catch basins if they get fuller than 60%. They're having to dispose of that waste. Um, and we needed a facility to do that in, so we, we thought we would write a, an application. And this is where the benefit of, of having this kind of group of people to, to network with, Brian here from uh, city of Washougal, Battleground. He and I uh, get together about every quarter with a bunch of the Southwest Washington stormwater managers, and we get to share ideas. Well, as I'm trying to prepare a regional decamp facility, why not get a copy from somebody that's already submitted one that's already been accepted to try to see what, what it is they did to make theirs successful. You don't have to start over. You don't have to go to page one and go, ooh, brief narrative. How do I write this down? How do I put it into words so that I can sell it to the reviewers? Get somebody else's application and look at what they put. You might want to check on piracy, you know, if you're gonna copy it word for word, but you'll get the gist of what they're trying to say and that'll give you some thoughts of what you want to say and how you want to sell your project. And you can do that with every box that is in that grant application. Go through there, read what they say. If they were successful, there's no reason you can't be successful trying to do the same thing, but get ideas from other people. Don't try to reinvent it all by yourself. It takes a lot of time, it really does. Got the grant offer for the regional decamp facility. Um, we'll be taking both those projects probably to our city council soon to ask them to approve them, and then we'll sign the draft letter and. I don't know where we're going to come up with the, the match yet. I might have to hit the casino on the way home and see if we can get our match. But um, we're looking forward to both projects. I, I, I like both of them. Well, I like all the projects I submit. But um, I think they're, they're very good projects. Right now, our, our decamp facility um, is right next to I-5, exit 81. It's the old wastewater treatment plant. Uh, has anybody ever heard of drying beds? Back in the day, they used to take the biosolids um, and put it into a drying bed and it would sit there for months and dry to a, a cake product. And it's got a covered roof on it, the water evaporates, filters down through, goes to the uh, wastewater treatment plant for treatment, and then you're left with this kind of like a brownie material that you would try to get rid of. That's been our decamp facility. The roof's too short so you can't even open the vector truck or the street sweeper high enough. We needed a facility that we could use properly and that's why we submitted this application partnered up with the port, the city of Chehalis, Lewis County, WashDOT said, 
do you guys have the same problem? And I, I was just talking with Tim out in the hallway about decant and he was talking about the problems they're having in Tumwater. So I think we're all probably in the same boat for, for decant. There might be a few of you that have a really nice facility, maybe got some, some state grant money to do it, but we haven't and, and we're getting ready to, to uh, hopefully build one maybe next summer, get, get going on the planning and the design. Okay, the question was, is our, our application that didn't get funded and then got funded later, did we go ask questions why? And I didn't ask questions. Uh, I guess I'm one of these guys that, you know, if, they, if they're not gonna fund me, somebody else had a better need or a, a, a I don't know. It, it wasn't, I thought it was good enough, obviously, but maybe somebody else needed the money more. The reviewers were looking for something specific. So I didn't go back to them. I don't know that I've ever talked to a PM during this process. I, I look at it this way, and I'm not saying it's the wrong way to do it, but I look at it this way. They gave me an application. I'm supposed to fill it in, and I'm supposed to sell them on my project, and I want it to be rated number one. How do I do that? If it's number two, I'm still okay with that. You know, if it doesn't make the cut, you know, yeah, I probably should have asked them, why didn't it? You know, um, what was wrong with it? How can I do better? Um, I didn't. I, I guess I didn't lose any sleep over it, and, you know, Let's look for the next funding opportunity because other people needed money as well. We're not, we're not the only city that needs money to do projects. So a few more of them rated higher than us and that, I'm okay with that. 